SEC Network Football presented by Allstate as the Missouri Tigers ranked in the top 25 this week having won five of their last six they get to host ninth ranked Georgia coming in six and two from Faroe Field here in Columbia on a cold crisp day here in Como last week Boy, things got warm in a hurry because there were points and yards all over this field. Missouri hosting Arkansas. Missouri got off to a great start, led by 10 behind really two outstanding running backs. Larry Roundtree, 185 yards, three touchdowns. But down the stretch, Arkansas would end up taking the lead by 14 in the second half. Then it was Missouri's freshman kicker as Mevis knocks home the 32-yarder as they went back and forth. Finally, 50 to 48, the Tigers keep their run alive. Three straight wins. Dave Neal, DJ Shockley, Lauren Sisler, glad you could join us today. And DJ, tell you what, this Missouri team has come out of nowhere. Who would have thought we'd have a top 25 matchup in December between these two clubs? But that's what we have. And it really starts with Larry Roundtree, epitomizes what this Missouri team is about. Yeah, he is simply the engine of this offense. When he is going, this offense is really efficient. And you're talking about running the football. He is a downhill punishing style of runner. And then when he is running at a higher level, he opens up everything in the pass game for Connor Basilak to throw the football down the field. If he runs hard, if he runs physical, he's got four games this year of 100 yards plus. He is a physical guy at the point of attack. And Georgia will have their hands full today with Larry Roundtree. Over 3,500 career rushing yards for Mr. Roundtree. Meanwhile, Georgia seems to have settled in offensively behind their quarterback, JT Daniels. But, Shock, it was a little shaky early on before we finally got to number 18. Yeah, they started the year with Dewan Mathis expecting big things from him and things just did not pan out for Dewan Mathis early in the season for this ball club. And then they moved on to Stetson Bennett, who actually played pretty good, but also had some limitations for this offense. And then here comes JT Daniels, who has taken this offense to a new level. He is a true lightning rod in his offense. The vertical pass game is there. He has turned into one of the more efficient passes in the first two ball games. has played really well. They will need more of that today from him. JT Daniels uh, just making his third career start with the Bulldogs. It has been a crazy month for Georgia, really a crazy year for everybody, but really for Georgia, it's been kind of wild and wacky. For more on this story, let's go down to Lauren Sisler. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning. Wild and wacky indeed. A crazy month for the Georgia Bulldogs who have had two of their last four games postponed due to COVID concerns from the opponent. But Kirby Smart told us that there is some upside to that, and it starts with the fact that Missouri is playing in their prime in what is now a top 25 matchup and their starting quarterback JT Daniels has gotten a ton of first team reps and it comes at an optimal time with a loaded deck of skill guys who are healthy and playing some of their best football. Yeah, Georgia, it's kind of weird for the Bulldogs, right? Not not playing for an SEC championship. They've been there three straight years, 17, 18, and 19, but this year not there. And I think as Kirby Smart has said all week, man, it's, it's good to have a team like Missouri in front of you, keeping your guys focused. We'll see how focused Georgia is on the road on this cold afternoon from Faroe Field as Missouri will get the football first, and that will bring out this offense that has scored 91 points in their last two games under their redshirt freshman quarterback, Connor Basilak, who was 6-1 and one as a starter. Shock, what do you like about this 6-3, 220-pound right-hander? Well, the number one thing is he's confident. He throws the ball with accuracy. He hasn't turned it over much this season, only two interceptions, as you can see. But he gives them a vertical pass game, makes really good decisions with the football inside the pocket and has just really taken this offense to a new height since he's taken over early in the year. An offensive line that has gotten healthy the last couple of weeks. They'll send Roundtree, split him out to the right. Basilak will throw that way, and Larry can't hold on to it. It'll be second down and 10 to start things off. Missouri's offense scoring about 28 points a game. That is eighth in the conference, but they have really picked up the pace here the last couple of weeks. As we mentioned, 91 points in the last two games. They're averaging almost 32 points per game over their last six. And I think everybody's starting to settle in under this Eli Drinkwitz offense, which is going to be interesting today. He's a lot of eye candy in this offense against this Georgia defense that has really pressured the quarterback. Basilak lofts one up, and that one is picked off. Eric Stokes with the interception. He already has two pick sixes this year. And Stokes will turn the corner, and Georgia has outstanding field position as Stokes just grabbed his fourth interception of the year. 
And we just talked about Connor being a guy who takes care of the football, and this is a force. This is not there. This is good coverage down the field. You see, they got a guy underneath, and they hit his hands, but that's still a force and right in the hands of Eric Stokes. And he's a guy who's always been around the football, a little high, but you see great coverage from Georgia on the outside. And Stokes is the culprit of coming up with that interception, giving Georgia great field position on their first drive. And for Basilak, he doesn't throw a whole bunch of interceptions. That's just number three on the year in 260 attempts. Let's see what Georgia does offensively. They'll stay on the ground on the first play. They will give that to Samir White, team's leading rusher at over 600 yards this season, averaging 76 yards per game for a Georgia offense that's putting up 31 points a game, fifth in the conference, 47 in the country. And JT Daniels, you see what he's done through two starts, almost 70 percent completion percentage six touchdowns and just one pick that came two weeks ago against South Carolina after the eight yard pickup second down and two they'll keep it with Zamir Wright will be tripped up close to the line to gain down around the 12 yard line and this run game is where Georgia wants to live they have done a pretty good job all year running the football they had a game versus Mississippi State where they ran for eight yards and then ran for 332 yards in the previous game versus South Carolina. So they want to get the ground game going and then allow the play action and JT Daniels to work off of it. Fresh set of downs for Georgia. Stay on the ground. They'll give it to White. Breaks a tackle, gets it inside the 10, down to around the six yard line. Georgia coming off that game against South Carolina where they just stuck to the round uh, ground game rushing for 332 yards most in two years in terms of rushing yards. Yeah, the physicality they want to have up front is something that coach Kirby Smart talked about and Missouri knows coming to this ball game they have to stop the run first and force JT Daniels to beat them throwing. Second down and three. Again on the ground, they'll give it to White, working that left side of that line. And he'll get it to the four and stop right there. It'll be third down and about a yard and a half, perhaps, to get the first down. Nice job of that interior D-line for Missouri, being really tough and physical at the point of attack. But JT Daniels on the year, 11 of 12, 150 yards and four touchdowns on third down. But something tells me this ball will be in the hands of one of the running backs. They'll line up in the eye formation. Handoff left side. They'll give it to McIntosh. He breaks a tackle, falls forward, has the first down. It'll be first and goal for Georgia. And Missouri had exactly what they wanted. A big time tackle machine. And Nick Bowden meets him right at the point of attack and ends up fighting through there and making that tough, hard run from Kenny McIntosh to convert that first down. But Nick Bowden is a guy we've seen all year long and is the heart and soul of that Missouri defense. Sixth play of this drive, they've all been on the ground. You can keep it on the ground here. McIntosh with that little pitch and a touchdown for Georgia. That didn't take long after the interception by Eric Stokes sets up Georgia with a short field and Kenny McIntosh will take it to the end zone from two yards out and the dogs out in front, six to nothing. And they catch Missouri in a little tempo here, a little quick toss to the outside, and they get the edge, they get the corner, get a hat on a hat, and it's an easy walk in for McIntosh. And that is the drive you want. And coming in here on the road against Missouri after a turnover, you want to convert. Pod Lesney to attempt that point after. It is up and good, and the streak continues for the Georgia Bulldogs at 323 straight point afters, an NCAA record. McIntosh with the touchdown. And George is out front seven to nothing here in Como. Twenty-seven on your left, Eric Stokes with his fourth pick of the year, making his twenty-third consecutive start today. Helps Georgia pick up that lead on the short touchdown run from McIntosh. And Georgia doing exactly what they want to do on this cold afternoon in Como, and that is get out in front. But we know this, Missouri has the firepower to come back regardless of the lead after a record-setting comeback in the fourth quarter last week against Arkansas. Time for our shock value, and really we were all shocked that Basilak just threw a pick 
Yeah, that's what the emphasis is coming to this ball game. You can see the numbers compared to Ian Book on the side there. Only two QBs with 250 plus pass attempts and only two interceptions. Obviously, he just had one. But that just tells you how rare it is for Connor Bays like to throw an interception. And it just happened on the first drive. I'm sure he will find a way to regroup, but it's something he rarely does. Second possession now for Missouri. They'll start the 25. They'll hand it to Jalen Knox coming around from his wide receiver spot. Knox does have 12 carries now for 100 yards on the season. And DJ, we talked a little bit about it. Georgia's pass rush has been really good. They've had 166 quarterback pressures. Eli Drinkwood says he doesn't like to use the tight end, keep backs in. He does it, tries to slow down a rush with eye candy as Roundtree makes the catch of the first down. So in terms of what we'll see from Missouri to try to help Bazelak get some time, what will that mean? Well, it, we just saw it on the previous play where they come across with the jet sweep motion, but they're pulling two offensive linemen to the opposite side. Georgia has to be really good in their discipline of what they see and then adjusting to it because Eli Drink on his offense is going to make it really difficult on Georgia. This time they'll fake it to Knox, do a little shovel pass underneath to the tight end Daniel Parker. That didn't go very well. Georgia's middle certainly holding up well there. And you see Jordan Davis, 99, getting in the mix. Good to see him back on the field. But Herring is the one making the play for the dogs. Yeah, and this is part of just reading your keys. If your responsibility is to stay inside, which was for Malik Herring, he did a good job there and not worrying about everything that's going to the perimeter, but solidifying what's inside. Round tree. In a tailback. They'll hand it to him straight off the right side. Runs into a wall of white jerseys. Led there by Monty Rice, the senior out of Huntsville, Alabama. 46 tackles, second on the team this year. It is a crucial down here on third down. When Missouri has had some success throughout the season, and Georgia on the year. It's fifth in the SEC, only 38% teams converting. So you see if Coach Drinkwitz has a good play call called up here on third down. That's Bannister across the fo formation. Three receivers in the near side on a third down and eight. Georgia bringing four. Over the middle pass is caught right at midfield. That'll be a first down Missouri as Jalen Knox makes his 29th catch of the year. And this is something Kirby Smart talked about with Connor Bays. Like, hey, they brought a little pressure, but they also played zone behind it. And he found the void right in the middle of that zone, delivered to Jalen Knox, who is one of his more dependable receivers, and they moved the chain. Very good conversion there on third and long. Missouri's been good on third downs, almost 47% on the year, and convert there to keep this drive alive. Give it to Roundtree right in the middle of that Georgia defense. Nothing there. Let's go downstairs, check in with Lauren. Hey, guys, I want to go back to last week. Coach Drinkwitz had a lot of confidence in his offense to drive the ball down the field and score with three timeouts, 46 seconds on the clock. Connor Bazelak said that confidence is a game changer for him and the guys on the field. When the staff can have that kind of confidence, not give up on them and put them in position to score makes a big difference. And, of course, I know they didn't want to open the drive the way that they did, but they've got confidence and they can move the ball down the field and get back on the board here. Yeah, I think confidence is something we, we could just uh, is oozing from Missouri offensively right now. Maybe not so much defensively after last week. They'll get it to Bannister. He gets to midfield, stood up right there. Nice play on the edge from Georgia as they'll get the tackle from Quay Walker. And one thing is you see he made the nice open field tackle that Dan Lanning, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, talked about during the time when they had a little off time, they worked on tackling. Everybody on that defense talked about towards the end of the year, teams start to get a little bad with their tackling. The fundamentals start to go to away, but Georgia did a good job there of Quay Walker getting Bannister to the ground, which is a really shifty receiver in space. Another third down and long. Georgia bringing four. Bazelak under pressure. Connor. He's just going to have to slide around the 48 and picks up maybe a yard, but it'll be fourth down and about seven and a half, maybe eight yards for the Tigers. 
Georgia again bringing a little pressure, but it still only ends up being a four-man rush, like you mentioned, Dave, and force Connor outside of the pocket. But Georgia on the outside, plastered to the receivers, really nowhere for him to go with the football. Just a good job of making a good decision, not throwing it in the traffic. Grant McKinnis, the transfer from Kentucky, punts this one away. Kiaris Jackson, fair catch at the 10-yard line. Georgia with a much longer field on this possession, but they do lead by a touchdown back in a moment. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. There is a look at Brad Smith, who played in the early 2000s, the all-time leading rusher at Missouri with 4,200 yards to his credit. Larry Roundtree up over 3,500, second all-time, the leading running back rusher in Missouri history. As a matter of fact, in terms of SEC rushers, Roundtree right now sits at 21st all-time. And if he can pick up over 100 yards today, which is certainly a yeoman's task, but he would move all the way up to 16th in SEC history in terms of rushing yards. That's how good he has been in his career. Georgia Bulldogs sitting just outside their own 10 yard line leading by a touchdown. JT Daniels has yet to throw as Georgia continues to run it. This time Kenny McIntosh gets the carry averaging almost six yards per carry on the season. Markel Utzi in to make that tackle. Georgia going a little tempo. I think maybe Arkansas exposed Missouri in that up tempo last week. Georgia might try to step on the gas a little bit more this week than they normally do as George Pickens makes that reception. George now with 25 catches on the year. Yeah, and as we've seen around the league, whenever one team does something pretty well, it's always a copycat league. You want to do some things to expose them. It really hurt Missouri's defense last week when Arkansas went that tempo and used it to keep kind of Missouri kind of vanilla on defense. First down and 10, a little check with me now for JT Daniels. Todd Monken telling us he is an air raid, but it is not the Kendall Bryles air raid by any stretch of the imagination. There is a tempo effect to this offense, but they'll keep it on the ground here as James Cook gets that carry. Right over the 25-yard line, Devin Nicholson, first one there for the Tigers. Well, you can just see all the movement up front, and James Cook is a shiftier guy in space. And Georgia's done a really good job here early in the ball game on early first down runs. They've gotten five, six yards, and here you see they're second and four. It gives Munkin everything he wants to use if he wants to throw it or run it. Toss sweep. Samir White turns the corner and much more. First down out around the 45-yard line for Samir White. Good block up front by Justin Schaefer. Yeah, similar to the touchdown here, just a quick toss to the corner. You set the edge, the tight end seals that defensive end, and then you get on the corner and you get receivers blocking as well before you know it, you're seven, eight yards down the field. Right now, Georgia has dominated the line of scrimmage so far running the football. And Missouri may have to add more guys to the box to help out, but Munkin has spread out this Missouri defense so far. 11th play of the game for Georgia. Nine have been on the ground. They'll stay that way on this handoff. Broken tackle by Cook. He's into Missouri territory inside the 40 down to the 39 yard line. Nick Bolton trips him up. Give this offensive line, number 50, Warren Erickson, who's in the game for Trey Hill, who is out because of an, uh, of an injury with some knee injuries. He has done a good job so far in the middle of that offensive line of creating that space along with Ben Cleveland. They are really pushing the limit right now for Missouri. Jermaine Burton comes in motion. First down and 10. Again, Georgia staying on the ground. White bounces off one Tiger defender and nothing there. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Bolton finishes up that play. Dawson Downing also in there to help out. So if Nicholson you're Nick Bolton, shot, if yeah. you're, he gets ejected for targeting last week on a call that you and I could look at a thousand times and, <laughs> and, and yeah. think that it wasn't, but obviously those in charge thought it was. He's an emotional guy. What kind of impact does that have on him today? 
Well, uh, I think he continues to play the level he's played, and he's played in a bunch of football for Missouri. He will be the signal caller communicator, but emotionally he will stay the same because that's what this defense needs out of him for them to be successful. Burton on the catch. A couple of yards as he falls forward. Burton's been a guy that has stepped up for Georgia of late. True freshman. Yeah, watch the defender fight through the block here, Pierre Jackson. He's the guy that causes Burton to kind of pump his feet a little bit. And a good job of rallying to the football. But like I mentioned earlier, JT Daniels has been really good on third down in his first two starts. His first opportunity here on third and long. Does Missouri bring pressure? Do they play man? The first big play of the ball game for him. He's 11 of 12 for 150 yards and four touchdowns on third downs. That's just third downs. <laughs> Clean pocket. Nice catch by Cook. He's to the 15, to the 10, 5. Touchdown, Georgia. And the third down success continues for JT Daniels. That's his fifth touchdown on third down attempts. Crazy. Well, third down is all about matchup. You get James Cook on an angle route of first man coverage, and he just beats his guy across the face, and JT Daniels gives him a good catchable football, and then you see him in space. This is what Georgia has done all year with James Cook, is find those advantageous matchups, and he has won majority of the time. Pod Lesney's point after is good. James Cook is their best Receiver out of the backfield. That's his 16th catch, his second touchdown reception. JT Daniels is now, are you ready for this? 12 of 13, 190 yards and five touchdowns on third downs. We've got just under three minutes to go here in the first quarter, and Georgia's numbers are impressive. They just went 90 yards down the field, put up their second touchdown of the day. As JT Daniels, three of three on that drive, and he just uh, hit his seventh touchdown pass of the season in just nine quarters of work. It was fun talking to him this week, and I think you can see how an impressive young man he is and how cerebral he is in this offense. So the Georgia fans, I know, are excited to see more of him. Kick off into the end zone, out to the 25-yard line. Hey, coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central, Tennessee takes on Vanderbilt. The Commodores trying to piece together a team to take on their rivals from Knoxville. That'll be coming your way at 4. And then at 7.30 Eastern, it's Auburn and Mississippi State, our SEC Saturday night matchup. All coming up right here on this very network, and you can always see it on the ESPN app. Temperatures expected to get to about 40 degrees. Rain this morning, but it moved out, so it is a frosty day with the wind howling at Memorial Stadium in Columbia. Another little toss to the wide receiver, Deontay Smith. Georgia's speed able to stretch this field 55 yards and not a whole lot of room to run. Yeah, yeah you can see. They're trying to stretch this Georgia defense horizontally so they can hit some things up the middle with a round tree. But you mentioned the speed of the safety coming out of the middle of the field and seeing there really doesn't provide anything for Missouri. And I think this is a pivotal drive for Missouri. They have to move the football. They got to pick up some first downs. They have to try to get some points on the board because right now their defense is really. Here comes some pressure. Basilak sees it, gets it to round tree. Larry. First down and a whole lot more. Biggest play of the game for Missouri. Good job by Basilak to see it and get it out of his hands in a hurry. Yeah, Georgia brings pressure and he gets the ball out right away. You see the blocking on the perimeter. And then you get into one of your best playmakers in round two, whether it's him running or throwing. He is one of the guys you have to get involved in the game plan. And you see, once you get him out in space, he is tough to bring down. Quick throw coming near side. Pass is caught by Jalen Knox. He's into Georgia territory. Give him six, maybe seven on that play. And these are the plays I love from Missouri. The ball is out of the hands of Basilak quickly, not allowing the rush to get there from Georgia. And then you get it outside where you force this Georgia defense to play out horizontally and then tackle in space. And you see a really good gain on first down. This is staying ahead of the change from Missouri. That's going to bold them well as this game progresses. 
Basil X hit eight out of ten to start this game. Here's Roundtree. Hit that hole in a hurry and just picked up a Missouri first down at the Georgia 41 yard line. And you see the benefits of going horizontally. Now you have a couple creases inside to run the football as in the first couple series. It was really, really mucked up in there where you couldn't really run the football inside. But now you're having a couple opportunities here and you have to continue to, to try to stretch this defense. Beatty will check in. Wearing number one in the backfield, a real weapon in the pass game. They will fake it to Beatty. Basilak coming near side. That pass is caught. Nice reception by Hazleton. And that should be good enough for another first down. It'll be, it'll be close with 29 seconds to go here in the first quarter. I talked about his calm, his poise, and a nice route on the outside by Hazleton, who's been a, a big time factor for him. His 26 catch on the season. But Basilak standing there and throwing that football from the opposite hash all the way to the sideline shows his arm strength. And doesn't matter if it's cold or raining, this guy can sling the rock. They are just short of that line to gain, so it'll be second down and one. And if you're Eli Drinkwitz, you've got a, a lot of options on a second down and one, but he'll think about it as that is the end of the first 15 minutes. Georgia dominated it for the most part, but Missouri on a little bit of a run here, trying to put some points on the board. Rose Bowl, the All-State Sugar Bowl, the home for the college football playoff semifinals on January 1st. Georgia, unfortunately, for Bulldog fans, won't have the opportunity. First time, really, in four years that they haven't played for an SEC championship. They've been to three straight championship games, but not this year as the Gators and Alabama set to go next weekend. Missouri on the move. They pick up the first down with Larry Roundtree. What's happened to this drive shock that's kind of, I guess, opened up things for Missouri? Well, I think they've done a good job of stretching Georgia horizontally. Now, when you stretch them horizontally, things start to pop up the middle, and it's been a, a little bit of cat and mouse game with uh, Drinkowitz and Coach Landing is, where do you stand? Because they ran it, they've thrown it, and they've kind of opened up a couple things that Missouri likes to do offensively. They get a fresh set of downs right at the 31 yard line. A lot of motion, a lot of movement before every snap. Basilak goes under center. They'll send Kiki Chisholm in motion. And they'll throw to him. The old double pass, perhaps. Chisholm going up top, has a man. Pass is caught inside the five yard line. Messiah Swenson. And a little trickery from Eli Drinkwitz. It's first and goal. I know they'll take it, but this could have been a walk in touchdown. And Missouri goes with tempo, but this is something we see every week out of Missouri. A trick play, something that gets the defense off balance. Round tree. They fake it to him, and Basilak will score the touchdown. Talking about this Missouri offense needing a big boy drive, and they came up with one there. Trick play. They were very efficient. They were really good on early downs. That is the Missouri offense that Eli Trickowitz has seen the last couple weeks. And you talked about it, Dave. This is an offense that can put up points and numbers in a hurry, and we just saw it. Harrison Mevis with the point after. It's up and good. Eli Drinkwood said, you know what? As a play caller, you got to be smart, not conservative. This was anything but, Shock. Oh, I love that smart but conservative, and they find it. Look at Connor just walk in for a touchdown. Missouri's back in it. I, we were just talking about that <laughs> during the commercial break. About he, he's got to be in the conversation, I would think, how good he's been. Hey, and guess what? You guys tonight can talk about it all night long on SEC Football Final, hosted by Dari, Chris Doring, Roman Harper will be there. They'll take you through the biggest stories from the day, break down all the games. 10.30 Eastern, right after the Auburn-Mississippi State game right here on the SEC Network, and, of course, the ESPN app. Folks on the hill in the end zone, socially distancing in their little pods. They what? Chuck, last week, Missouri, Arkansas, there's only 11,000 fans allowed in the stadium, but they were making noise like there were 50,000 in here. It was it, in a day and age when we don't get to see a lot of fans, it was a lot of noise. It was fun. It's things that your team builds on. You want at least some kind of home field advantage. Georgia trying to take that away as JT Daniels goes up top. They're going to say that Pickens makes the catch. 
What a grab from George Pickens. Yeah, I want to see if he got his feet down here. He does a good job of elevating going up to get the football. Does he get that foot down? He oh, absolutely does. Gets that right foot down. Does he have control of it? I think We're he has to take another it. look. I, I, that ball was, was moving a little bit, but I think that's one of those again. I, it, and it goes back to, you know, whose eyes are you seeing it through, right? Yeah. Because it looked like when he high pointed that ball, he had complete control of the ball, right? Foot down, control the ball. Hits the ground, starts to rattle a bit. Either way, an outstanding catch, and it's something that he's given, JT Daniels has given these receivers a chance to win. And we see him go up and elevate and get the football. Has control. Call on the field, it's a completed catch. All right, so does it stay that way, Shock? I think it stays that way. I mean, he has control all the way through, and it looks like he barely. It'll be hard to overturn that for me, Dave. I say catch. What do you say, Dave? I say it stands. Stands, not confirmed. I've been, I'm, I'm so <laughs> wrong on this stuff, though. It's, it's not even funny. <laughs> Pick and say that it's a catch. Receivers always say it's a catch, right? I mean, it could be a clear drop, and sometimes receivers say it's a catch. A healthy but George on this Pickens one, he may have an argument. Has uh, been a pleasant plus for Georgia. They're going to give him the catch. So that play will stand. And George Pickens with an exceptional catch sets up Georgia first down and 10 at the 46. So there, we got one right, Shock. We both are right. Look at that. They'll toss it to Zamir White. He is tripped up and hit right there from Joshua Bledsoe, the man they call Jiggy, who's getting Jiggy with it. <laughs> Bringing out a little Will Smith right there, Dave. I like it. But Bledsoe's a guy who plays in that slot, plays down near the box line, does a good job of getting through the traffic and making a really good open field tackle because that could have been a bigger game than it was. Or lost easily. Two yard loss there, second down and 12. JT getting some heat, throws. Passes overthrown, it'll be third down. Let's go down to Lauren. Okay, let's go back to two plays ago. We saw how special George Pickens is. We all know he's another level of talent, an athlete as a receiver. And JT told us, hands down, his ball skills and body control are the best. And anything in his catch radius, he's going to go up and he's going to make plays. And we just saw that. Yeah, it, it, he truly is a difference maker on the outside. The sophomore out of Hoover, Alabama. Three touchdown grabs. They you see a lot of Missouri's playing tons of man coverage. Georgia receivers have to win. Pocket collapses. Daniels goes down. Martez Manuel. Two and a half sacks now in 2020. And you see what happens when the offense has success. Now comes a little pressure from Ryan Walters. And really nowhere for JT Daniels to go to football and the Missouri defense gets home, gets their offense back to football, and now this defense feeding off the offense here for Missouri. Jake Camarda, third in the country, 47.8 yards per punt. That one will hit at the five, and Georgia can't save it. Had an opportunity to pin Missouri back at the one. The Tigers will have it down a touchdown. Second quarter action continues after this. There'll be some shakeups. I hope they are ready for all the different scenarios that could pop up. Missouri. And Roundtree makes the catch out to the 25 yard line. Give him five there. So Missouri with a up. nice drive to pull within seven. And now I guess, it, it, are you feeling as a quarterback? Okay, we've moved the football. I, we're feeling comfortable, confident, offensively. Yeah, he's in, yeah, he's in the groove. I mean, you see, he's taking the completions that are there. Uh, you see him in second and four. There's not a lot of stress on the offense here when you have good success early. 
Run a little option game. Basilak, who ran that offense in high school, takes it there, but is hit hard and is not moving. He's slowly getting to his feet. Crowd wanted a flag. Christopher Smith came up to make the hit. The junior out of Atlanta playing for Richard LeCount, the safety, the outstanding safety who was injured. And there. And Smith also dinged up as well on that play. Definitely hope both guys are okay, but. Yeah, like he takes that shoulder right to the helmet of Basilak. Watch Jordan Davis, 99. I think it's his knee. Oh, yeah, that right That's knee. That's exactly right what it was. Jordan Davis at 330 pounds in full stride. Hit the back of the helmet. And now a chance for the true freshman Brady Cook to come on at least for a moment while they assess the situation with Connor Basilak. And that's just a tough break for Basilak because he's been playing some really good football. Just was feeling comfortable getting into the groove of this ball game. So hopefully he's okay and has a chance to return. But we've seen Brady Cook throughout this year. He's 404 on the year for 62 yards and a touchdown. But like you mentioned, he's a true freshman walking into a ball game with a really good defense. Not a bad play just to hand it off to 34 a couple of times here on a first down and 10. Monty Rice runs him out of bounds. It'll be second down and nine and a half as you look at Brady Cook, uh, ranked as the top 20 post-style quarterback coming out of high school, over 3,000 yards and 33 touchdowns as a high school senior out of St. Louis, Missouri. A couple of weeks ago, got some action against Vanderbilt. We saw that game and his first touchdown pass. Looked like a little miscommunication in the backfield, but it works out as Tyler Beatty makes that reception. Well, now they're looking at that hand. Well, that was just a that was a major collision. He looks to be okay. Looks like he's going to want to get warmed up and throw the football around a little bit. But you were thinking possibly hitting the head. And when you ever think about a head, it's always somewhere in the range of a concussion. But he looks to be okay and hopefully get a chance to return to this ball game. But a big third down here for Brady Cook to try to keep this drive going. We'll send Beatty out to the near side. Empty set. That throw is batted down and complete. Raymond Walker getting his big paws up in the air. 6'5", 290 sophomore, knocking that one to the ground. Yeah, trying to go a little quick screen out here, and he gets up field really good and gets, and gets his hands up. When you can't get to the quarterback, he does a good job of getting those hands in the throwing lane and knocks that football down to give the football back to his offense. And now you hope that Grant McKinnis, if you're a Missouri fan, can hit a booming punt. McKinnis averaging 43 yards per punt this year. The grad transfer from the University of Kentucky. Yaris Jackson makes the catch and dropped right there at the 25-yard line. So Eli Drinkwitz checking in on his quarterback, but he needs his defense to get the football back. Georgia's up a touchdown here in the second quarter. Bears have a pretty good year. Yeah, not bad at all, man. I guess the numbers are decent, right? What is that, 21 touchdowns now for <laughs> On the ground. Bad. Unbelievable. Well, Georgia will go first and 10, couple of tight ends. They will hand it off inside. That will go to Kenny McIntosh, who's getting a lot of work today. McIntosh came in with 31 rushes on the year. Samir White, though, leading the way over 120. James Cook, 39. The last couple drives have been kind of stingy in the run game. 
not allowing a lot of things, and Georgia brings in James Cook. So I know Missouri has the antennas high when he is in the ball game. Cook, nowhere to run. Georgia brings in two tight ends, lines up old school football, but Missouri matching him up front. Martin Manuel making the tap. Uh, starts with penetration, Dave. I mean, they're playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage of Georgia. This is consecutive series where they have lost yardage runs, and now you have another third long situation. Where does Bird line up? Where is George Pickens lines up is the cancer here, and can they win? Missouri is playing man coverage again. Last time they were able to get home with a little pressure. They'll swing it near side. McIntosh, first down and more. And a big collision around the 45. They'll spot him right there. That's the play Georgia was looking for as McIntosh makes just his fifth catch of the year. Yeah, you can see the confusion here. The snap when he goes out in motion. You see how far inside Nicholson is. They just beat him out to the corner and out leverage the defender. JT Daniels, nowhere to go. Never even could get his eyes upfield as Missouri just puts the hammer as Trajan Jeffcoat gets the tackle. Yeah, he's got five sacks on the year, but he just decided, who am I going to take, the running back or the quarterback? And nine times out of ten, these big guys, they want the quarterback, and he takes a beeline to JT Daniels and another negative yardage run play for Georgia. Jeff Coe really has come on defensively for Missouri. Had a career-high five stops last week. Handoff, McIntosh to midfield, driving a couple of guys with him close to the line to gain. Give him 13, it'll be third down and one. And you see Georgia going tempo. They want to get up and try to pick up this first down right away and not allow Missouri to get their bearings. McIntosh trying to get that line. He needs to get to the 45. He'll be smart eyeballing it. Matt Leffler, our referee, eyeballs it. He says that's a first down. One thing to keep an eye on Missouri is every time Georgia tries to run this zone read type of look, regardless of if JT Daniels is giving it or not, they're taking a little extra shot at him. And I think coming into the ball game, they want to be more physical on him and try to get him a little disrupted. But Georgia has gotten the run game going here as they started this drive. Six plays on this drive. Missouri bringing some heat. Daniels going up top on first down, and no one is there. Yeah, I think McIntosh fell down on the outside. They tried to go double move on Nicholson on the outside and find that matchup with him. But he fell down on the outside, and lucky enough for Georgia, the ball was overthrown. Samir White back in the game at running back. White with the carry. The ball forward for a couple of yards. Georgia rushing about 172 yards a game. That's fifth in the conference. Of course, really struggled against Mississippi State. Eight yards on the ground, but then answered back in their next game against South Carolina with over 300. Yeah, man, man, man at the top of your screen with George Pickens. One on one, if they decide to throw the football out to him, he's got an opportunity at the top. Comes some heat again. Daniels hit as he throws, incomplete. They were trying to go that way, shocked to Pickens. But Daniels could not get the football away in time. Dawson Downey came in with the pressure. 
And this is Ryan Walters, the defensive coordinator for Missouri. This is his MO. He wants to be aggressive. He wants to kind of dictate the pace on the defensive side of the ball. And we've seen a couple instances where Georgia wants to throw the football. They have came with pressure and played man tight coverage on the outside. Kamarda back to punt again. And this one sails into the end zone. So the defense does their job. Missouri will have the football. Will Bazelak come back out for the Tigers? We'll find out on the other side. Thanks and to follow that up, guys. Georgia's first two drives had 14 plays, 112 yards, two touchdowns. Last two drives, 13 plays, 51 yards, and two punts. Connor Bazelak back in the game after taking that shot in the last possession. will hand it off to the right side. Good, strong running by Larry Roundtree. Let's go downstairs to Lauren. Guys, Bazelak came off the field grabbing his hand. He went into the 10, and they were examining it, and it looked like on the top of his right hand there was a contusion or a bruise, so it was obvious he was in some uh, pretty good pain down here. They put an ice bag on it. He was sort of sitting there while Brady Cook went in the game and finished off that drive for him. He threw the ball around, felt he had a good grip, and said, I'm good to go. I don't even know if you need an ice pack today. It's so cold huh. in Como. Yeah, just sit outside, right? Of it. You got to keep got to keep an eye on it. You, you can watch Bazelak through this. He's going to continue to. He won. Five yard penalty remains second down. You got to keep flexing that right hand to keep it going as you get a false start penalty on Zeke Powell. But watch him continue to flex that right hand to keep it moving to keep the blood flowing because they're going to need him in this game. First penalty of the game for either team. Second down and six now. Straight handoff to Roundtree, and he ran right into the middle of that defense. Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis. Jalen Carter, a young man, a true freshman, who's such an exceptional athlete. Played fullback, tight end, can dunk a basketball. Well, the upside for him. him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much I'm just rattling off things I do. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff you're still doing every day. I saw you doing it before the game. I mean, it's so talented you are, Dave Neal. The only difference is Jalen Carlos 6'3", 305 in <laughs> Florida. 5'9", 190, ain't going to get it done, is it? <laughs> Bazelak hit as he throws, lofts it up in the air. It is almost intercepted. Christopher Smith had all day to get there. He couldn't hold on. Do they get Tyson Campbell here, though, for a little grabbing or holding on the outside before that ball got there. And this will be a huge penalty. Pass interference on the defense, number 13. That's a spot foul, automatic first down. Aziz Uzulari. They're a standing outside linebacker. Leads this team with five and a half sacks. First down and ten now for Missouri. Good drive. You got three minutes to go over half. Georgia gets the ball at half, so Missouri would love to be able to get some points here. Bazelak, nowhere to go with that one. Go back to this pass interference, and it wasn't on Aziz Ojolari. It's on Tyson Campbell here. You see he got a little contact right before he gets to the receiver, and there's where the pass interference came in and ultimately is keeping this drive going for Missouri. Bazelak today, 10 out of 12, 67 yards. That one's incomplete. So now third down and 10 coming up for Missouri. It looks like Connor's just been a little bit off. That was a simple check down and probably throw it with a little bit more conviction and it was back at the backfield, catches it and you pick up some positive yards. But here's a 
a chance where they're about to have to throw the football down the field. And we'll see just how good that hand is here on this third and long. Barrett Bannister goes in motion. Georgia bringing some extra rushers. Basilak flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run. It is incomplete, and Georgia's defense forces a punting situation. Kiki Chisholm couldn't hold on to the football. Hey, you watch what it looks like from Basilek's point of view, and you look down the field, there's really nowhere for him to go with this football. He tried the back shoulder Chisholm there, but there was nowhere for him to go down the field. Good coverage on the back end for Georgia, forcing his punt. McKinnis averaging just shy of 40 yards per punt. Stands at his 20. Good clean snap. Loose football. It's still on the ground, and I think George is going to come up with the recovery. Wow, Jackson Curry couldn't hold on it. to it. The ball just looked like it snuck up on Kyrus Jackson, and they had a chance at it. It looks like Jalen Knox was a guy who had a chance to recover that football and just not able to get on it. Three Missouri guys right there, and Georgia still ends up getting the football. Would have been a big play here as the second quarter winds down. Well, 2.50 to go before halftime. Georgia has the football in all three of their timeouts. Georgia hasn't thrown it a bunch today. This is just their ninth attempt through the air. That one's incomplete. And now JT is five out of nine for 92 yards and a touchdown. And he had to let that football go sooner than he probably wanted to. There was pressure in his face coming right up the middle. They were pushing that pocket. Give Missouri a lot of credit up front. They have really kind of put the pressure on JT Daniels to get that football out of his hands. And that was only with a four-man rush. Second down and 10. James Cook on Nick Bolton at the bottom. Daniels going deep. And he saw that matchup, went that way, but overthrew James Cook. Nick Bolton a little credit there. He forced the, the route at the bottom. He jumps inside, and oh, it looks like he got away with a little grab there. But not enough for the ref to call it. And now with two deep shots, we got a third long situation here. If you can get off the field in Missouri, it'd be a three consecutive possessions of playing some good football. I don't think there's any doubt that Bolton got away with one right there. <laughs> yeah. Burton comes into the formation. Pre pressure comes. Daniels popped as he throws it. Incomplete trying to hit Burton. Gillespie came flying in there to put the hit on. JT Daniels. Gillespie comes and he is shot out of a cannon right through the middle and puts his head right in the chest of JT Daniels. And this has been the MO for Ryan Walters here in this second quarter. Bring pressure and Georgia hasn't done a good job of picking it up. And I don't think they've converted one yet when they brought that pressure. Kamara's punt is blocked. Missouri trying to stretch to the end zone. Did they get there? They're going to spot it inside the one-yard line. Unbelievable turn of events here. Missouri is feeling it on both sides of the ball right now. Special teams getting in on it. And you see them. They come out with the all-out blitz on third down. Here's the all-out blitz on fourth down to block this and get everybody in there. And look at it. Just a clean block. And Missouri gets in there, and now you get the football inside the one-yard line. Will Morris, 53, comes up with that football, trying to reach for the end zone. The backup linebacker, they have him spotted inside the one-yard line.
He'll tap it to Beatty, who is stuffed for a yard loss. Georgia all over that one. I thought Beatty had a chance to, to really stretch this thing out. I know it's on the one-yard line. He's trying to stick his head in there. But he has the speed to outrun a lot of people to the corner. And if he takes that thing outside, he may have a chance to walk in. But Georgia's sitting there waiting for him. Last time Missouri was this close, they ran the zone read with Basilak, and everybody was focused on Roundtree, and he was able to walk into the end zone. See if we see something similar. Roundtree, straight handoff, dives for the end zone. Got close to the goal line, but then pushed back. Monty Rice, the first one there amongst the Georgia defenders. It'll be third down and goal. And this is the strength for Georgia, right in the middle of that defense. Big physical guys right in there. They do a good job of holding there the point and not allowing any movement from that Missouri offensive line. And big play here coming up on third and goal. Georgia takes a timeout with 124 to go before halftime. Hey, don't forget Monday at 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 Central, we'll have Thinking Out Loud with Alyssa Lang, Spencer Hall, Richard Johnson, and Brandon Boykin. We'll break down the weekend on the gridiron and talk about the hottest topics for the coming week, which I would assume would include an SEC championship game. Florida and Alabama will square off in that one. Both teams making their 13th appearance in the SEC championship game. It'll be the 10th time that the Crimson Tide and the Gators have played for the championship. No other school's even been to the SEC title game more than eight times. That's how good those two programs have been. That's going to be a fun game to watch there. All the offensive firepower in, on both those teams. Third and goal. You stay on the ground here, Shock? I think so. I, I, I think you got a big physical back. He tried to jump over that time. Maybe he goes behind his pads here. They've got the tight end. Parker lined up in the backfield. They'll run that way. Roundtree trying to get to the end zone, and he does. Touchdown, Larry Roundtree and Missouri. They're the extra point away from tying this one up. Yeah, I guarantee you during that timeout, Pilot Drinker says, hey, you're 215, 20 pounds. Stay behind your pads and run hard, and he did that. And that's what we've seen out of Larry Roundtree all year long. Physicality at his finest. And he's just a guy who would not be denied. He's a senior playing his last game in Como. And just watching George is there. They got an opportunity to bring it down here. But that is a tough and big back to try to bring down with one yard to go. I would say Larry Roundtree is an emotional player. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what would make you say that, Dave? Uh, He's <laughs> full of energy. Harrison Mevis with the point after. It is up and good. And we have a tie game with 1.20 to go before halftime. Larry Roundtree with his 12th rushing touchdown. He has seven of those in his last 10 quarters of work. And there is where he ranks on the school's all time rushing touchdown list. Brad Smith with 45. Larry Roundtree leads the SEC with 21 attempts per game. So Missouri features him, even though they want to throw it. They feature him. He's got 48 carries. Last two ball games coming to today, he already had nine. They will continue to feed him as the weather starts to drop in the second half. Well, before the touchdown, this was the play right before Roundtree got into the end zone. And he and the freshman Jalen Carter we're chatting with each other a little bit. And then the next play. You call that a chat? A little chat. <laughs> and then here's what happened shortly thereafter. Roundtree gets into the end zone. At the end of this play, he and Carter would resume that conversation. That kick sails into the end zone, and Georgia will have it now. Georgia scored 14 points rather quickly, their first two possessions. Since then, Missouri's defense has stepped up. So. DJ, the, the, the question is, how does Georgia get some momentum back? I know that you're only got a 120 left, but they got to have some success moving the chains a little bit. Yeah, and it starts on first and second down. And you look at the last couple drives, they try to take a couple deep shots, 
and you, they were incomplete. Overthrows, they weren't there, and now you're sitting back on third and nine plus, and that's when Ryan Walters has delivered and brought some pressures on JT Daniels, but this first down call to get this drive started is probably the most important call of this drive. So from the 25-yard line. Try to set up a little screen. The Jermaine Burton doesn't get a whole lot out of that. He does get out of bounds with 114 to go before halftime. And the speed of Missouri is starting to make itself known here. That's a screen all the way out to the sideline. And the guys from the inside, Jeff Cope and his his mates are running to the football from the inside out, retracing their steps. And you would think that would have a bigger game. You get nothing out of it. Trey McKitty, the tight end, splits into the slot. Quick throw. That one's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Almost picked off there by Markel Utsi. And now Georgia has to be careful here. You got a minute 11 to go. You got third and long. The last couple series, Missouri has came after Georgia and in this offensive line. Can they pick up a blitz, but also can they convert? Because if you don't, you give the football back to Missouri with probably a minute to go with three timeouts. They feel really good about that. We've seen what they did last week with Arkansas go down and get points under a minute. Daniels throws on the run and pass is caught first down Georgia. Nice catch on the sideline by Kiaris Jackson. 106 to go. Oh, well, what a beautiful throw. This football is out the hands of JT Daniels before Kiaris Jackson even turns around on this out route. And that's a nice job of anticipating the throw and having some confidence to let it go and to pick up a huge third down there to keep this drive going right here for half. Looks like Markel Utzi, the fifth year senior, slow to get up it is. And a Little Rock, Arkansas. Looks like he'll be okay, but he'll have to sit this one out. Georgia with a fresh set of downs. And how about the call of the time on 7 to 14 for 104 yards and a touchdown? They, they go third and long, and he changes the launch point. Gets him outside the pocket so their pressure doesn't get to him. It's a really good call from Todd Munker. Pass caught right at the first down line by Burton. JT Daniels and Jermaine Burton becoming close friends here since JT got the call to be the starting quarterback. Three man rush this time. JT going to that near sideline again, finds Burton, makes a man miss, picks up an extra 10 yards down to the 36 yard line. This is an unbelievable catch. This is good coverage on the outside. The defensive back is there. Tries to stick his hand in there, but Burton does a good job of securing the football. Then turn around and trying to get a couple yards after the catch. The timing is there. The ball placement was really good from JT Daniels. And now you got something going here with 45 seconds to go. Still got a couple timeouts. And remember, Georgia gets the ball after halftime. Missouri bringing some heat. Daniels hit as he throws. Lofts it straight up in the air. A flag comes down, but the catch is made. George Pickens with the grab in the end zone on the 50-50 ball. What a catch by Pickens. This is why 
Georgia fans are so excited. Watch him track this football. He's got a guy hanging all over him, and he still has the body control to come down with this football. Unbelievable There's catch. There's two fouls by Pickett. the defense. Offside, number 11. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense, number 24. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. JT Daniels took a shot on the play as well. The field was a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Both guys jostling for the football. Well, the question is, when he falls to the ground, it looks like the ball may have touched the ground. But is there enough there? Now, again, shot the ball can can actually the, can touch the ground as long as it doesn't help you make the catch. Absolutely, absolutely. Looks like a touchdown from those two angles. Yeah, that's an unbelievable catch. Yeah, it looks like he got both. He got hands underneath the football. Calling the wow. touchdown. I think that's a that's an unbelievable play. George Pickett can, can, can pick it, can he? <laughs> yeah. Man. Busted onto the scene last year with that MVP performance in the All-State Sugar Bowl when he had 12 catches, 175 yards. Been slowed by injuries this year, but when he is healthy, is he is a game changer. And when we talked to JT Daniels, I asked him this. I said, if it's third and whatever, and you got man coverage and you need somebody to make a play, who are you going with? Who's your guy? It's a touchdown. And he said, point blank, George Pickens is unbelievable when the ball's in the air. Touchdown, JT Daniels. Threw one up for grabs, but the good news was he had George Pickens at the other end. <laughs> George Pickens, I don't think it's 50-50. It's more like 70-30. Yeah, no matter what, right? As long as it's in <laughs> yeah. his radius. Rod Lesney to attempt to point after. It is good. 37 seconds to go before halftime. Missouri has all three of their timeouts. Remember, they moved. 60 yards in 45 seconds or so against Arkansas to score set up to what would be the winning field goal last week. But JT Daniels today 10 of 17 167 a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, I just go back to that third and 10 call where Missouri had been just keep Georgia up on third down and Todd Munkin moves the offense moves the quarterback outside the pocket and they get a big conversion to Kier Jackson on the sprint out. And from there, they were off and running. Well, we thought we'd have some points in this game, and that is coming to fruition. Georgia, a two touchdown favor coming in. Up by seven. Academy Sports and Outdoors is making it even easier on you with in store pickup. It's all new and basically means you go to academy.com, order whatever you need, and come get it in store. Get in, get out, get back to having fun with your family. Well, we're having some fun here. In Columbia, Missouri, again, Tigers five of six. They have won after dropping their first two games out of the gates. Georgia at six and two. They've won back to back games against Mississippi State and South Carolina. Their two losses coming to Alabama and Florida. Yeah, Missouri's not going to go anywhere. This is a team that's continued to fight all year. They've shown their ability to be able to come back and put points on the board. They've done it today. There are two guys who introduced themselves to each other on the last drive, Roundtree. <laughs> Chatting it up with Jalen Carter. 
Dave. All he's asking is, hey, man, what do you guys do after the game? You know, what kind of music you like? That's the kind of conversation that's happening right there. Eli Drinkwitz will just ride this one to halftime. Georgia with a late touchdown. They scored too early, two quick touchdowns to take a 14 to nothing lead. Missouri storms back. It's a seven point game. Let's get you to the studio. Peter. SEC Network Football presented by Allstate, where the Georgia Bulldogs on the road lead Missouri 21 to 14. Exciting first half of football. I'm sure the second half will bring much of the same as we take a look at our Velveeta smoothest play brought to you by our friends at Velveeta. And how about George Pickens on that touchdown catch? Unbelievable coming out this football, the body control, fighting another defender off and then maybe to come down that football and the quarterback. It feels so much better after you get hit and you see your receiver come down with the catch. George Pickens is a special receiver. Look at our first half stats. Missouri having a tough time running the football today. They had a couple of nice drives, but for the most part, Georgia able to keep them at bay. Georgia giving up over just about 20.6 points per game. Missouri puts 14 on them in the first half. Georgia sluggish, I guess, middle of the first quarter, middle of that second quarter before they finally got that last touchdown drive. Offensively, they finished with 238 yards. That's not a bad sluggish first half, is it? No doubt. <laughs> Man. Had a pump block, Georgia did for the first time since 2015 against uh, Alabama. That set up one of Missouri's touchdowns. Georgia will get the football first to start the second half. And this one is returnable. Kiaris Jackson, he is hit and dropped right at the 25-yard line. Let's go downstairs, check in with Lord. Hey, guys, coming out of the locker room, Coach Drinkwitz said he wants to see his football team run the ball better. They've got to get some vertical plays downfield. They've got to be more explosive. And defensively, they've got to get the stop on third down, especially these third and long situations. But, hey, we got them right where we want them, he says. Down seven, top ten team. Let's go win the game. Well, Lord, they have been in close games much of this season, including last week. And they rallied from 14 down to knock off Arkansas 50 to 48. But he's right about those third downs. Georgia was five of eight on third down conversions in the first half. They'll keep it on the ground here and hand it off to Zamir White. A nice seven yard gain to start things off as Manuel brings him down from his safety spot. And this is where Georgia started the ball game, running the football in the interior. And Missouri started to kind of bow their neck a little bit, but now Georgia's going back to what made them special. But then also in the first half, Georgia average yards per completion, 16.7. That'll work. <laughs> They're telling you, you're throwing it down the field and dudes are making plays for you. Hand it off again to Samir White. Big hole left side to midfield, to the 40. Run out of bounds by Tyree Gillespie. Watch the patience here of Zamir. They want to go down, they seal it out. Good job by Big Cleveland coming around there, and then the patience to allow everything to happen and just open up for him. And then you see the speed of Zamir White getting to the corner. And two good runs here to start the second half for Georgia. Yeah, White just picks up a quick 42 yards on those two opening carries. That one went for 35, 81 yards. Now on the ground for White. Two tight end set for the Bulldogs on first down and 10. And McIntosh trips over his own guy. Looked like the tight end McKitty slipped on this slick turf. It has been kind of a misty, cold day here in Como. Matter of fact, how about this little nugget? Kickoff, uh, temperature at kickoff was 39 degrees. Previous now, coldest temperature at kickoff was 40 degrees. That was under Kirby Smart. That was last year against this same Missouri team in Athens. Oh, wow. JT Daniels to the end zone, and Pickens they're can't catch it, but there is a flag right at the goal line. Yeah, they're going to get Pickens for the push. He pushed off right at the end as he was trying to go up for that football. Ah, 
No, they may get the defensive back there. Yeah, he. It's be an interesting call. You, you can. This could probably could go both ways. And I, I think that's what the discussion probably is. Yeah. This might be where you say, hey, let's just wave it off. <laughs> Can't go either way. There is no foul. There is no foul on the play. They're down. Well, there you go. Yeah, you probably had one guy saying, hey, he pushed off, and another guy said he didn't turn around and look for the football. I like the no call there because it could have went either way. But again, another third down. The last time Georgia had this third and long situation, they sprinted JT Daniels out. See if Missouri comes with pressure. That's kind of been their MO every time they got in third and long spots. Missouri trying to get set up on third down and 10. Looks like they've settled in. Six on the line of scrimmage. They'll bring five of those guys. Quick slam. Pickens catch. First down. Touchdown, Georgia. George Pickens having some kind of day at Faroe Field. You go man coverage, you get double slants on the outside. And look at the ball placement where this football is. The ball is quick, it's out, hit Pickens right in the face, and you can't make a tackle outside. And this is what's going to happen with a big time receiver. And I asked JT about it, and I'll say it again. Whenever he gets an opportunity, he's going to find number one whenever there's man coverage. Not the only thing to bring him down is the slick area <laughs> behind the end zone. Point after is up and good. George Pickens, four catches, 103 yards. Two of those have brought the rain. Another third down completion for JT Daniels and another touchdown for the Bulldogs. Semifinals get underway January 1st. The Rose Bowl, the All-State Sugar Bowl will host those. Georgia with a two touchdown advantage now. Take their opening possession of the second half. And George Pickens with that touchdown. Marty Smith, Ryan McGee, they'll have some fun as they always do and talk everything that is the SEC. It's Wednesdays at 11 o'clock Eastern time, 10 Central, right here on the SEC Network and of course on the ESPN app. Sure they'll be talking about the SEC championship game coming up next uh, Saturday from Mercedes-Benz Stadium, an 8 o'clock Eastern time start, late night. Late night, late night. That game usually a little bit earlier, around like 4. But moving it back to prime time, I like it. Got some other SEC games going on next week during the course of the day. Connor Basilak took a couple of shots in that first half, but stays in the game. Going up top on his first pass, and it is caught on the sideline. Hazleton with another outstanding catch and a good start for the Tigers. Yeah, I love this throw. It's an inside fade route, and look at the room he has to lay this football out and throws a perfectly throw football for Hazleton to come down with this football. Another matchup that favors Missouri on that particular play, and good job of Basilek just dropping that football in there. Hazleton, the graduate transfer by way of Virginia Tech. He bobbled snap. Basilak, though, calmly lofts it and throws it away. For more on the Missouri quarterback, let's go down to Lauren. Yeah, guys, Connor Baselak says the biggest thing that has changed or improved for him this season is having control of the offense. Earlier in the year, he didn't feel like he was in complete control, but now he's got the trust from his coaches. He can make changes when he needs to. He told me that really ignited during the Kentucky game going up against that defense and having a lot of success on third down. Yeah, he's just a calm, collected soul back there. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't seem like much rattles him. No. This might rattle him, though. The Georgia pressure forced him out of the pocket, throw a little bit light for Kiki Chisholm. And now it'll be third down. I'm kind of add on to that. Coach Drink was talked about some of the things they do early in the weekend. He says Connor actually sits in on the coaches meeting 
on Mondays when they try to get ready for the game, and he helped put in the game plan. So he understands it from the early stages all the way until, you know, they get into the ball game. So he is a big part of what they like to do and big calls. So here's another time for a big third down call here. Trying to set up the screen to Beatty. He's got a long way to go, and he's not going to get there. Stopped at the 37, about five yards shy of the line to gain. Some pushing and shoving going on. Daniel Parker, the tight end from Missouri, in the mix. A couple of times these clubs have gotten to know each other. Holding on the offense, number 82. That's a 10 yard penalty. Replay, third down. Missouri's first conference game since uh, joining the SEC was against the Georgia Bulldogs. How about Missouri? We tend to forget that they jumped into this league, right, in 13 and 14 and won SEC East Championships when nobody thought that that was possible. Yeah, and came in and just took over the East, and everybody's like, Where's Missouri coming from? They've had a kind of lull here in the last couple of years. But uh, you can see the talent that they have now. You can see they're starting to be very competitive, and they've shown that this season. Matter of fact, the five wins against SEC competition, the most since they won those back-to-back -back SEC East championships in 13 and 14. Third and 15. Pressure comes, Basilak hit as he throws again in the air, and this one is incomplete. Bulldogs with another opportunity to pick one off. Can't get it done. That time it was Mark Webb. Aziz Ozolari gets the pressure around that side, forcing him to step up. And the ball looked like it might have been tipped just a little bit by Trayvon Walker. And then the kind of volleyball action going around in the secondary. Lucky enough for Missouri, the ball hits the ground. So McKinnis back to punt it away. Kiaris Jackson will let this one hit inside the 10, and it will take a bounce into the end zone. So that'll come out to the 20-yard line. Georgia up two touchdowns with the football. Good look at Memorial Stadium, home to the Missouri Tigers, trailing by a couple of touchdowns on this cold day in Como. Well, Eli Drinkwitz in his first year coaching in the SEC. He did have a year at App State as a head coach last year, where great success there. Five and three in his opening campaign. You see what Kirby Smart did in his first season at Georgia. Eight and five, they would go on to win the Liberty Bowl over TCU that year. And both these guys are hoping, you know, JT Daniels is a will be a third year sophomore a draft eligible sophomore if you will but I, I don't think there's any inclination that he's going to do that so both these teams will have these guys back and that is a uh, that could be a danger to teams in this league yeah big upside JT Daniels nine touchdowns now in the year I think coming to this ball game Stetson Bennett who was the guy had eight JT a little bootleg drops it off to Burton stutter steps and he's going to be just shy of the line to gain, so give him nine and a half. You know, one of the things that I think we've seen with, with JT Daniels getting in there at quarterback is some of these receivers, have, you know, you get Pickens back healthy, right? Burton also has been banged up a little bit, playing today with a bad quad, but he's averaging 17 yards a catch. He's a talented true freshman. Kiaris Jackson's been playing. Well, uh, Georgia's receiving cores have kind of elevated their game as well. And that's been a real issue for Georgia the last couple of years. Yeah, he's been the best thing to happen to all these receivers. And the reason why is his opportunity. He's given these guys opportunity to catch the football. Look at how many opportunities they've had today. Just at what we call 50-50 balls is giving his receivers a chance. And when he has those one-on-one -on -one opportunities, he's not overthrowing a lot of guys. He's giving those guys chances to come down with it. And they know it. And their opportunity is called upon. They have made the play. Pickens has made four catches today. Two of those went for touchdowns on over 100 yards receiving. Demetrius Robertson in motion. 
Here goes Kenny McIntosh. Nice little stutter step. Frees him up on the near side, and he'll be pushed out of bounds in Missouri territory by Gillespie. Well, these are some things you can't teach. This, this vision here. Watch him set this up. There's a backer right there outside, and he comes and gives him that little dead leg and bounces back outside. The vision that Kenny McIntosh has, and this is why they're glad to have him back. He was banged up for a couple weeks. That hurt uh, in the the game early in the season, but they're glad to have him back to have that combination with him and James Cook and Zamir White, of course. JT Daniels slings it over the middle. It's incomplete. Or just two tight ends, Fitzpatrick and McKinney, right in the same spot. Let's go down, check in with Lauren. Hey, Dave, you pointed out that last year at this time when the two team played, it was cold. Well, it, this is the first time at kickoff that Georgia has played in 39 degrees since 2014. So Kirby says you got to block out the elements. Well, how do you do that when you're a California quarterback? Well, here's the deal. JT Daniels said that when it would rain, he and his dad would quickly run outside, throw the football around so they, he could prepare for days like this. Pretty special, guys. Yeah, that was, I, I was kind of, yeah, first of all, you don't ever know if he's like joking with you, right? We, we found out he's got a dry sense of humor. But yeah, he was like, yeah, man, I'd sit around the house with, with pops. It'd start to rain and we'd both just run outside. That was the only way because it hardly ever rained where he grew up. Yeah, it's, it's a different thing to throw a wet football. That ball is a little bit heavier. And of course, the grip was a little bit different, but he said they worked on it at Georgia. So if it did rain today, he wasn't too concerned about it. Said he only played in snow one time in his entire life, and that was in Pee Wee football. There was some talk this week, Wednesday, Thursday, there might be some snow here in Como. There is some Zamir White. That'll be a touchdown, Georgia. Touchdown, Georgia. 43 yards, and the dogs are opening this up. Matt Luke, the offensive line coach from Georgia, is one of the top recruiters in the country, but also motivators. I'm sure after what happened a couple of ball games ago, they talked about physicality, get the line of scrimmage, and they had a hat on a hat. Each guy got up to that second level, and Zamir walks in for a touchdown, untouched, but a good job of blocking up front. Give those big guys all the credit. An injured Missouri players why we have a stoppage in play for a moment Zamir White now up over a hundred yards rushing 12 carries 126 yards averaging ten and a half per pop Dawson Downing He's got some sort of left arm injury So Camarda will hold it for Jake Podlesny. Jack has been perfect in point afters and stays that way today. This is how you do it right here. Rolling here in this ball game. Zamir White open it up. Big run. Georgia up big. I know that was that was tough. I thought that was going to go in the way you made that sound. I know that's a complete sale on BB. Well, Georgia has opened up a 21 point lead on the Missouri Tigers. Georgia has put together 393 yards of offense. Missouri 154. Hey, make sure to check out ESPN Plus, where right now you can read Wright Thompson's definitive story of Archie Manning and just as important, the story of his family, including his grandson, who was one of the most sought after high school players in the country. ESPN Plus is your home to more than 3,000 premium articles a year from ESPN's top writers, including Thompson, Matthew Berry, Mel Kuyper Jr., among others. I had a chance to read that last night from Wright Thompson. It is beautifully written and captures not just the Manning family, but the Mississippi Delta where he grew up. And it just, uh, it was a quick read. It is a 
beautifully written story by Wright Thompson. Pass is caught there by Kiki Chisholm. Critical drive for Missouri as Georgia's kind of taking over this ball game. Missouri needs to get some things going. And we talked about it, Dave. There's been a little hesitant behind Basilak here throwing the football late here as you know he got hurt early in the ball game, but this offense has to put something together here on this drive. It's a movement up front. It's gonna back up Missouri. On the offense, number 72, five yard penalty, second down. Yeah, that's something Georgia does a lot of. They move right before the snap. A little pre-snap to change up the look for the offensive line. And they've done it a couple times this year, getting offensive linemen to jump. It just takes away the good game they had on first down. Basilak, quick hitter. That one is in the air. Is it picked up? They're going to say incomplete that it hit the turf. Georgia thought they might have had the interception, but that was... Well played by the Bulldogs on the back end. Tyreek Stevenson making the play. Yeah, watch him just beat the receiver to the football here. He actually beats the receiver to the ball and is bouncing around. And Georgia had a chance off the ricochet, but looks like Georgia's kind of honing in on what Missouri's doing here in the quick game. Georgia bringing three. That's incomplete, trying to hit Jalen Knox. And whatever success Missouri had early on is not there anymore. Yeah, they've gotten away from some of the things they did really well, which is the little quick screens on the outside, quick completions. And now this offense is kind of out of sync, and Georgia sitting on everything on the defensive side. And that was probably the last thing that Missouri offense needed was a quick three and out, putting your defense back on the field. McKinnis to punt it away. Kiaris Jackson. Fair catch called for at the 29-yard line. Of course, a week from tomorrow, we will have our college football playoff selection show. And before we get there, Shock decided to break it down for us on what he thinks the four will look like. Yeah, and we're talking about it right now. Uh, obviously, Ohio State has an opportunity to play in the Big Ten championship game, and I know that'll change a lot of things. But right now, Texas and a team who's in the SEC playing more games, I think that matters right now as opposed to Ohio State. Obviously, they look good, but until they win that championship, I like Texas and m right now. And even Greg Sankey said it earlier, you should be rewarded for playing games. And I know it's not Ohio State's fault for some of the games they've had uh, that's been canceled or postponed, but... Texas had them all SEC schedule. Only lost to the number one team. That pass is caught by the big fella, the tight end, Darnell Washington. A heck of a grab. He has been relatively quiet in the pass game this year, but watch this catch. Oh, my. He's only 6'7", 260 people on the outside running a, a go route. And look at the concentration to come down with this football. And again, Todd Markin finding a matchup he likes, put one of his, his big-time playmakers who they've been trying to get the football to and find a way to get him involved in his offense. And you find a big catch for your tight end. Daniels will go up top again. And that one is incomplete. Trying to hit Darnell Washington again. This is a young man that came in as a number two ranked tight end in the country. Some had him as a five, some had him as a four star. Regardless, he is an excellent talent. Pass interference on the defense, number 11. 15 yard penalty, first down. They're coming into this game with only two catches. They come right back to him on the wheel route and there's too much contact on the outside from Devin Nicholson. And it's hard to, to not want to put your hands on a guy that's 6'7", 250 pounds, trying to fight for space. 
Monken said that while he was in Tampa with the Buccaneers, they drafted O.J. Howard, and certainly Washington has that type of ability and can be that type of player, but just has to learn what it takes to be successful in the SEC. J.T. Daniels to the end zone. This one is knocked away. That's three straight times they've gone to, to Big O. We talked about giving your players an opportunity, but I thought J.T. probably put a little bit too much air on his football. But I understand that when you're, you got a 6'7 guy outside, you just want to try to throw it up to him. But he actually had him beat. If he throws it out there, it's probably a touchdown. But a good job on the, on the backside. Good play, knocking that football away. Second down and 10 from the 20-yard line. See Trey McKinney, the tight end in motion. Georgia will run it here off the left side. They'll go with Cook. He's inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the Bulldogs. Warren Erickson with a good block up front for that hole. Warren Erickson getting the start at center. Trey Hill, who has been Georgia's starter at center, has had surgery on both knees and just uh, not able to get back, obviously. So a changeup. Trey Hill had started 26 consecutive games, but they move Erickson over there to kind of man that line with Sawyer, Schaefer, Ben Cleveland, Warren McClendon. They'll work the right side now with Cook. Touchdown, Georgia. Just too easy right now for the Bulldogs. Yeah, you get leverage on the corner, and you got two of your bigger tight ends on the outside blocking, and it's just an easy walk-in touchdown for James Cook. Look at the leverage you catch on that side. You got both your tight ends blocking, and now you got nothing but a corner outside, and he seals the edge and allows the speed of James Cook to get to the corner and an easy walk-in touchdown. Cook has a touchdown receiving, a touchdown rushing, and Georgia's put together 449 yards of offense. Jack Podlesny to attempt this point after, and he will split the uprights again. 42-14. Chance for us to get an update. Peter, what's going on? All right, Dave, right after this game, we'll be talking to you about what's going on in uh, all of college football. But Sarah Fuller, everyone saw this young lady make history two weeks ago as the first female player in a Power 5 game. She'll be back when the door is taken on. The Vols, an hour and a half. Thanks, Peter. I was on Peter's radio show yesterday. He was kind of kind of became my psychiatrist after about 30 minute conversation. I felt so much better after our discussion. <laughs> What's the crux of this conversation? I mean, what? Well, we were just breaking minimum. down the uh, the analytics of the college football playoff, and I couldn't decide how I felt about Ohio State. And he kind of you know, walked me through it, and I just felt better. <laughs> well, Eli Drinkwitz not feeling real good right now with his team. Trailing 42 to 14 here in the third quarter. They were tied up at 14, and Georgia scored that touchdown right before the half to George Pickens, who made a great catch. And that, as you said, Shock, just kind of sucked the life right out of Missouri. Yeah, I think it took some of the life out of their sails because they were playing good football, going back and forth, and had came back from 14 down. And ever since that touchdown before half, it's been kind of downhill for Missouri. Into the end zone and out to the 25-yard line. Hey, tonight we'll have SEC football final hosted by Dari Noka. Chris Dorham, Roman Harper will be alongside. They'll take you through the biggest stories of the day and break down all the games for you. That's 10.30 Eastern time right after the Auburn-Mississippi State game, which is our SEC Saturday night matchup. You can, of course, see it right here on this very network, or you can dial it up on the ESPN app. Connor Bazelak, 13 of 23, just 106 yards, no touchdowns and an interception. Georgia has really had uh, all the answers to defend him. Here's Roundtree, and they've had answers to defend Mr. Roundtree as well, who today now 11 carries, 18 yards. You talk about penetration. You talk about the line of scrimmage. He has literally nowhere to go to try to bounce this football, and Georgia just playing one or two yards on the other side of Missouri's line of scrimmage, and it's tough to get going when Georgia's been styled at the point of attack here in the run game. They'll fake it to Roundtree, bootleg this way, and the pass is caught. Nice grab on the sideline there by Barrett Bannister. He'll be about a yard shy of the line to gain.
Missouri just two out of seven on third downs today. Georgia's been seven out of ten on their conversions. Aziz Ajilari will check in along with Jermaine Johnson on this third down and one. They will hand it off to Knox. Trying to get the corner and he is hit and dropped out of bounds by Tyson Campbell. Just tough to go east and west on this defense, and Georgia does a good job of just stretching it all the way out. And it's hard to really turn the corner on this defense when you don't get the leverage, you don't get the right block, as this is not a good side. As you see, Jalen Knox looks to be in some pain over there. But I'm sure not the call you wanted there on third and one. They actually lose a couple yards. And watch Georgia stretch this all the way out. And Jermaine Johns does a good job of his leverage in the corner. Tyson Campbell does a good job of keeping his leverage on the outside. And just really nowhere for Jalen Knox to turn this football up to. And the oh, Kirby Smart on the sideline shock. And he was very excited about how his defense played that. Couple of fist pumps, unfortunately, for Missouri. Jalen Knox has been one of their better receivers this year. Is looks to have some sort of leg injury. Eli Drinkwitz over there as well. His head coach talking to the junior out of Jonesboro, Louisiana. Knox is one of those take the top off top guys with a 10 6 100 meter time while he was in high school. I'll tell you one thing about Eli, Eli Drinkwitz. We asked him a little bit about why has he had some success, and he told us in our conversations this week that he feels like he's gotten the trust of the team. It's taken a while, but these guys realize what he says he means, and what he means he says, and it's it's an open relationship, and I guess that's such a huge part in today's world, right? I mean, if you don't yeah. believe in your coach, yeah, and a lot the good of times these teams it, aren't gonna play for you. The good thing about it is they've had some adversity, and he's been the same guy, and they've been able to come through it. When you had that adversity, you learned so much from your coach and player. So trust is huge. Coming up at four o'clock Eastern. Not too long from right now, about an hour and a half. Chance to see the Tennessee Volunteers take on the Vanderbilt Commodores in that. Old classic rivalry, although I don't know how much of a rivalry to be with Vanderbilt down to a limited roster, to say the least. And that'll be followed by Auburn and Mississippi State, which should be a good one. Bo Nix closing in on 2,000 passing yards, ranked sixth in the Southeastern Conference. Auburn's had one of those up and down seasons. It's been hard to figure out the Tigers this year, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mississippi State, that'll be a fun ball game. They should throw around a lot. Little toss sweep going to James Cook. He's run out of bounds there by Devin Nicholson. You know, one guy we haven't talked a whole bunch about today is Missouri's linebacker, Nick Bolt, one of the best in the country. He has been relatively quiet today. Bolt with just four tackles. Bolton came in fourth in the conference, averaging 10 tackles per game. And he'll be on the end of that particular stop. Jelani Williams, the first one there. What makes it tough is these linemen are getting up to that second level. And you see there, the first guy that gets to him is the safety. And that makes it tough on any defense when the offensive line is doing a good job of combo blocking, going guard all the way up to the linebacker. And they're just creating these lanes to run through for Georgia. And coming to this game, I thought it had to be a balanced attack if Georgia wanted to do or be successful versus Missouri, and they've been able to run it and throw it. Handoff goes to McIntosh. 
Bounces it to the outside, gets it to the 40-yard line. Devin Nicholson will get credit for the Missouri tackle. Georgia now content just to chew up some of this clock. They're closing in on 500 yards of offense. Missouri sitting at 169 yards. Yeah, something we haven't usually seen out of Missouri's offense. They've been able to put up numbers on everybody. But Georgia's been stingy today, and they've created some big plays on offense. And off goes to Zamir White. He powers his way for five. Give Georgia, excuse me, that carry by Dewan Edwards. So the three, not the 33. So the true freshman out of Norman Park, Georgia getting a carry. His 27th carry of the year. Days on a four star. ESPN ranked him as the number 33 ranked running back coming out of high school. Days on will stay in the game. They'll fake it to Edwards. JT Daniels pass is caught. Washington over the middle using that big frame down to the 30-yard line as it takes two Tiger defenders to get him to the turf. Let's go down to Lauren. Hey, guys. Coach Munkin said he has all the confidence in the world in JT Daniels. If he calls it, he knows JT will execute and deliver. He doesn't fear a single throw in the game plan that he can't make. And it really starts with the communication. JT communicates everything he likes and everything he doesn't like, really. Munkin told us he's much like Ryan Fitzpatrick in that sense. You call that, I'll find you a completion. Jameis Winston, on the other hand, when he was at Tampa, would just say, I got it. So Munkin knows not to call something JT doesn't like because really it's just a complete waste of time. Well, I think he's called a lot of stuff that JT's like today. Well, JT has shown us, too, that he can take a hit shot. He's been uh, he's yeah. been lit up a couple times in that first half. Yeah, he's been tough standing in the pocket, and that's kind of the one thing that they have, you know, wanted to see from JT is his ability to take some shots inside the pocket because those are things you just can't get in practice. And I think all the Georgia fans were concerned about why we haven't seen him well. You never know how a guy's going to respond until you put him in the ball game, and I think they put him in at the right time when he was ready to go. Here's Edwards on this carry. There's Nick Bolton in there for that tackle. Maybe the final play of the third quarter that has been dominated by Georgia as they have put up 28 unanswered points since it was tied at 14 apiece. Georgia going to try to get one more playoff here, it looks like. JT Daniels says, yeah, I'll sling it one more time. And there is Pickens again. Are you kidding me? The kind of day he's had, his catches have not been easy. It'll be first and goal Bulldogs when we start the fourth quarter. But another great catch by George Pickens. Unbelievable. Going up, contested, guy in your face. But this is what a big time receiver does. He comes down with the catch and makes it fun for his QB. Well, Georgia has been putting up the points and the yards today here in Columbia, Missouri. 522 yards is a season high. The previous high was 471 two weeks ago against South Carolina. And uh, this Missouri defense just hasn't had many answers here in the second half to slow down this Georgia offense. They're now looking at a first and goal to start the fourth quarter. Daniels to the end zone, lofts it up in the air, and that one is incomplete, trying to hit Darnell Washington. We came to this game talking about how this Georgia offense has really taken off. And JT Daniels is a big part of the last three ball games with him as the starting quarterback. They've scored over 30 points. In the previous six ball games, they only did that twice. So that tells you the, the offense ex explosion that they've had with him on the center and everybody around him. It seems like has taken their game to a new level. And look, kudos to Kirby Smart. I mean, this is a team this kind of season where it's been tough, right? You just had your game canceled last week. And these guys came ready to play. Edwards turning the corner. He's ready to play. Hadn't played a whole bunch this year, but taking advantage of this opportunity and gets it in the end zone. 
from six yards out. There's the difference. Missouri has a guy sitting right in the hole who can make the play. Georgia goes three tight ends on that particular play and just tosses it similar to what we saw early in the ball game. And the back makes one guy miss and he walks into the end zone. Good run from Dewan Edwards there. Point after up and good. 49-14. Georgia still putting points on the board, and Edwards wants to get in on the show as well. Georgia is up big. How about the Georgia Bulldogs? 35 unanswered points. Four different Georgia running backs have a rushing touchdown today. George Pickens has had another exceptional day receiving five catches, 126 yards, two touchdowns. This game was tied at 14 apiece late in the second quarter. So we'll see if Missouri can't find a way to move the football and pick up some first downs here. Georgia's had their way offensively, and it's been a complete total mess offensively today for Missouri with just 169 yards of offense. This is a team that's put up back-to-back -back games of over 600 yards of offense. That's how good Georgia's defense has been today. Yeah, and they've stymied them in the run game. Uh, they've contested throws on the outside, and it's been tough for Missouri and Basil like to get anything going consistently. They'll go with Roundtree. Larry, one of those guys that's had back-to-back -back weeks of impressive numbers, but today he has been stuck, averaging just a little bit over one yard per carry. Yeah. Compared to last week, he was averaging almost seven yards a carry. And it's been the front four for Georgia, to be honest. They've played on the other side, and they haven't really been pushed around. Again, Roundtree trying to find some room to run, but Stackhouse, they're another one of those true freshman defensive linemen for the Georgia Bulldogs out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Four-star recruit. And that's the thing that... Georgia fans are going to be excited about it is how many times we've said today true freshmen at this position true freshmen at that position they're still young uh, I know the aspirations and expectations are high but this is a team that's going to be competing for it for a long time to come in the next few years but Missouri and Basilak are going to be right in that territory as well Basilak underneath throw that pass is caught by Kiki Chisholm but he'll be shy of the line of game by a couple of yards so fourth down, and here comes that Missouri punt team. So another three and out for Missouri offensively. And for Missouri in the second half, it's been all about the early downs. And they've had too long to go on the third and six plus to ten. And that's where they've struggled, and it's been hard because Georgia plays so much tight man defense. Even if they do catch it, there aren't many times where Missouri has some yards after the catch. McKinnis punts it away. So George will have the football. 12.36 to go in this one, and they're rolling. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. Well, look at the new football complex in the end zone at Memorial Stadium, and it is a thing of beauty. Next on the horizon for their athletic director, Jim Sturk, as a matter of fact, he came out this week, said they're looking for the 100-yard indoor football facility. We'll mm. see if he can get that accomplished as you are watching SEC Network football presented by Allstate. Georgia has just been on a roll since we were tied at 14. They'll have the football at the 19-yard line. And a new quarterback in for the Bulldogs. As Stetson Bennett getting some work. Oh, 
First play handoff goes to Edwards. Opportunity for Georgia to get a lot of these guys in that haven't played a bunch of snaps and they've been working hard just like everybody else. So with 12 20 to go we'll see a bunch of new clean jerseys out there. Stetson Bennett great story we all know his story was a walk on early in his career left went to junior college came back ends up getting the starting job didn't start game number one. That went to Dewan Mathis who has since transferred out of Georgia put his name in the transfer portal. But Stetson Bennett ends up starting some games got hurt against Florida and just never really the same after that and they got JT Daniels healthy and turned it over to him but Stetson the the ultimate Georgia Bulldog. Yeah no doubt and I, I mean of course everybody points to the Alabama and Florida game but you think about that Alabama game they were in it going into that third quarter uh, playing some good football Stetson came in it was really key to some big wins early. The big win versus Auburn at home was huge for him and his confidence. And we were on the call for the Arkansas game where it looked like Georgia offense were was struggling mightily and he came in and kind of gave him a spark and kind of took the reins and but it's a new day for sure with JT Daniels but Stetson Bennett was surely admirable for his performances throughout the season. But Martez Manuel who has been a big part of this Missouri defense today six tackles a couple behind the line and a sack plus a, having a great day today. Big hole off the left side for Edwards. He'll take it out over the 30 to the 32 yard line. Edwards out of a powerhouse program in Colquitt County Georgia. Yeah, you, you talked about it a couple minutes ago Dave a bunch of new faces in the ball game. A couple of offensive linemen. I'm sure Georgia wants to see up front. And they're going to get a chance to go against a Missouri front that has you know a bunch of their starters in the ball game. So you see where you match up. There's some really good competition. They'll hand it off to Arian Smith and he has dropped for a big loss. Jelani Williams getting it done for Missouri. Yeah plays this really well is outside sees the reverse coming and doesn't allow himself to get blocked by the tight end and then surges up field to make the play really outstanding job by him. Great effort. One of the things Missouri's had to deal with a couple of true freshman corners getting the start today. Jarvis Ware out with an injury the junior normally one of those so J.C. Carlisle gets to start alongside Enos Rakestraw who's been there all year starting at a corner but still a couple of true freshmen against this Georgia offense not an easy task. Second down and 19. Edwards inside handoff breaks some tackles has the first down and a whole lot more. The true freshman inside the 35 down to the 30 yard line. Three missed tackles. They have seven missed tackles in the ball game, and you see literally a hat on a hat. He's running through arm tackles, and it seems that's the the criteria you got to be for a Georgia running back. Is you got to be running tough, you got to run physical, but arm tackles should never bring you down. And you could tell he continues to run with that toughness and physicality, and he wants to get in on the numbers as well. Little stutter step in the backfield by McIntosh. Nowhere to run. We get late in this ball game. Rain is starting to come down as kind of expected the temperatures to drop. And now you're seeing some of the heavy rain to come down here in the fourth quarter. Major Jeffco, one of their best defensive players, leaves the game with an apparent injury. Demetrius Robertson goes in motion. 16 will line up on that left side of the line. He'll run it to the right side.
Hey, we talked about this. Just giving Georgia some credit for obviously coming to this ball game, got their game canceled or postponed last week versus Vanderbilt, and how would they respond? Kirby talked about that Friday. He took his team bowling and some of the things they've done throughout the year to kind of keep these guys motivated. They've had meetings outside, and he, he's just changed up practices. He continues to try to find ways as this is the five-year anniversary of him being the head coach of Georgia. Bennett going toward the end zone, overthrows his tight end, John Fitzpatrick. And now it's fourth down coming up for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Kirby said, you know, some of the guys were telling us this week that they were a little disappointed that Kirby wasn't bowling out there. He said he threw a couple. <laughs> But they were a little disturbed Kirby wasn't bowling. Then we talked to Kirby about it. He says, well, I was trying to recruit some of these dudes. We've got signing day coming up. Yeah. And so we'll cut him a little bit of slack, I guess, right? He mentioned to Laura that, hey, yeah, and they wanted to see some strikes, but I was trying to get some more strikes in our program with some of these top athletes to get to come to Georgia. So he was, uh, he was pretty funny talking about bowling, but also trying to be recruited. He'll go all the way from that near hash is no good. Uh, Lesney misfires. He's now 10 of 13 on the year. George is still cruising here in Como. Bulldogs for our protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. Yeah, Dave T. Daniels has had an efficient day, and he's had time inside the pocket. When given time, he delivers strikes and finds the matchup that's advantageous for his offense. James Cook there on the angle route for a touchdown, and big third down play here to George Pickens on the slant for a touchdown. He has been everything and more of what George has liked, and when given the time, he has been accurate and efficient. Bazelak stays in the game at quarterback on a first down and 10. Pass is caught by Kiki Chisholm. It sure will be will. brighter days for this Missouri team, Dave, as we've, we've seen them a couple times this year and seen them put up some numbers and seen Connor Bazelak grow this entire season. Uh, today wasn't his day, but I know Coach Drinkwitz and his staff will be excited with what will come back next year. And, I know they still got another game next week, but it'd be fun to see this team grow. High throw incomplete, trying to hit Towski Dove, who had a couple of nice weeks of football against Vanderbilt and last week against Arkansas, but quiet today. Yet to be determined about next week's games, right? I mean, there's, it's day-to-day -day whether or not you get to play week-to-week -week now. All right. But regardless of what happens, uh, a big shout out to these universities, their medical staffs, the players, the coaches. The fact that they're going to be close to finishing this season, maybe missing just one game, yeah. is absolutely astonishing to me. Um, like I said, you know, who knows what next week holds, but there will be a championship game, and, and, you know, we will define who will be the best team in the Southeastern Conference in 2020. And if you'd have said that to me in July, I'd have said you're crazy. <laughs> no doubt. Um, and Dang. Commissioner Sankey, um, I, 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 I just, uh, he amazes me. He really is just a, uh, a brilliant guy that has some great leadership around him. Yep. And the fact that we're doing this is, is nuts. And uh, tip of the cap to all those in the SEC office and all the schools around the league as well. Dump it off underneath the round tree. I mean, I mean seriously, about I mean, think, think about I mean, where we were in June and July, <laughs> Shock. I mean, and we're about to finish a football season. Yeah, and I think we go back to when we decided to play. At the end of September, the SEC said, hey, let's just move our schedule back a couple weeks. And then we'll give ourselves a chance at the end of the year to have a December 19th where we can make up some ball games if we need to. And it's kind of worked out. We saw last week South Carolina, Kentucky have a full 10 game season. Uh, I mean, give a lot of credit to the leadership of these particular programs as well to make sure their guys are doing the right things and being safe. And this is the example of what we got a season. Stevenson on that punt return. The only thing is now, I think we've been spoiled with 10 conference games. <laughs> I know, I won't. I love it. <laughs> uh.
<laughs> I'll tell you what, there, there might be a lot of people around Athens starting to grow a mustache if JT Daniels keeps playing like this. Well, our first look at Carson Beck, the true freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, who Todd Monken has spoken highly of ever since we had their opener against Arkansas. Flag comes down on this play. And there goes Edwards again. He is across the midfield stripe into Missouri territory. Another big gain if it holds. There is no foul on the play. First down. Well, that is the second time we've seen that, but big run for Edwards as Carson Beck comes in, a four-star recruit, ESPN's number 14 pocket passer. He threw for over 5,300 yards and 71 touchdowns in his high school career. Yeah, Coach Monken said Beck is probably the purest passer they have at that quarterback spot in the room right now. Daniels, of course, has experience, but he said Beck can absolutely throw it. Timeout taken by Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs. Kirby's first five years coming to a close. He's 32 and 12 against SEC competition, but here's what he, he has done in comparison to what Mark Rick did in his first five years. And this isn't any, this I, to me, when I saw this graphic, the first thing I thought of was like, how good was Mark Rick run to start the, his campaign in Athens, right? Because yeah. Kirby has, has been dominant. Three straight SEC championship appearances, of course not going this year, but um, those are impressive numbers for both those guys. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I, I guess you, know, you always live in the moment, and it seems like Kirby and his program has been just crushing it, which they have. But as we just showed, the numbers are eerily similar. And I think the thing that's kind of taken him above and beyond is that second year when they had the national championship appearance and almost won the ball game. And I think that's where everybody thinks that program should be every single year. And I know that's the expectation. Let's go down to Lauren. Guys, Kirby told us that the biggest challenge for his team has been the fact they haven't been able to control their own destiny since that loss to Florida. Sure, the season really has had a mountain of challenges, but right now that's the one thing that's been glaring them in the face. So they've really had to focus on that, be intent in their work, maintaining that positive energy. And i got to be honest, from the minute they stepped foot on this field today, they were ready to go, ready to play, despite the postponement last week. And that energy has carried throughout this entire game, even when they were up against the wall a little bit there in the first half against a more competitive Missouri team. And it's carried over even now here in the second half. Yeah, I, I really think the fact that Missouri got in the top 25 this week helps you prepare a little bit harder, right, when you're thinking maybe this could be tough trip up to Missouri well it, weather's they, not very good right you, you, you turn on the tape and it, it's an old adage the tape never lies you turn on the tape Missouri yeah. has played really good football you saw what they did last we put up 50 points and they've scored and they've you know played good defense and they're in the top 25 like you just mentioned everybody talked about the environment would that be a something that Georgia worried about and they just came in and played their style and you got to commend Kirby for getting this, his group ready to go. Of course, uh, signing day coming up, the early signing period coming up. Georgia, again, looking like a top five class coming in. Alabama, based on uh, our recruiting experts at ESPN, they look like they're the number one class at this point. But it's a different deal. I mean. They're trying to they're trying to prepare for games, and he's trying to also bring in these four and five star dudes and get him to sign. He never it's stops, got to right? be a weird dynamic, huh, Lauren? Yeah, it's definitely been interesting. But Kirby said it's actually been a little easier to recruit right now with the pandemic going on, the inability to travel, go see guys in person. First of all, he's had more time at home with his family, but it's been a little more organized for them with the Zoom calls, less drama because. You're really not going to see a lot of kids waiting until February to, to make their commitments. And I think the big part about that is, as he mentioned, hey, when you have to go see kids, you worry about other coaches coming in, trying to change their mind or going to a different program and seeing the facilities and all that kind of stuff. It looks like Missouri comes up with the fourth down stop. But that is a big part of it. And now everybody's kind of on an even playing field and the kids kind of know, hey, this is where I'm going. And if I'm going in early, this is where I go. 
Well, one of the other things, and this is for all these schools, to figure out who's coming back, right? I mean, it's kind of a free oh, yeah. year, so you have some of these seniors, and even juniors that might be draft eligible. Um, they may return, and one thing Georgia has, you know, they've got right now six guys who have announced that they would play in the Senior Bowl, and you lose that year of eligibility if you play in a college all-star game. So there's six guys at this point that Georgia knows that they won't have coming back. So maybe that helps kind of clear things up for, for Kirby in some regards. Um, but some teams won't know right away, right? So, yeah, because the interesting part about it is they have a number of kids who will come in early. They, you know, we always have the early enrollees that come in in January. And a lot of these coaches talking about having to fill those spots of the early enrollees. But then you also don't know who's leaving because you still got a season. So the dynamics from the coach's standpoint has been a little bit different and sometimes a little bit difficult, too. Well, Georgia today has put up over 600 yards of offense, 615. They have held Missouri to 194. Missouri in the second half has yet to eclipse 100 yards of offense. In this game, I go back to it again, was tied at 14 with a minute to go. Yeah. In the second for, quarter. For Missouri, it, it starts with third down. They're two, they were two for 10 in this ball game on third down. And then on Georgia offensively, 18.7 yards per completion. They're having chunk plays all over the field. And Missouri just was not able to win those 50 50 opportunities when they threw it out there. Definitely a tough day for Missouri today, but can't take away from the five conference wins. I think most people thought this team would win two, three games this year. Elijah Young, one of those young backs that Eli Drinkwitz so happy to have on his roster. The true freshman out of Knoxville, Tennessee, the Class 5A Tennessee Mr. Football, the Tennessee Gatorade Player of the Year. Something to build on. JT Daniels, another good day, just shy of 300 yards, 299 through the air for JT. Bad snap. And Brady Cook will be dropped behind the line. And that very well may do it. Well, JT Daniels has certainly turned this Georgia offense around. Bulldogs put up 49 big ones, and they hold Missouri to 14. And Georgia will go to 7-2. Missouri drops to 5-4. and four. Georgia and Missouri with one game remaining. Missouri hopes to play Mississippi State next week. Meanwhile, Georgia hopes they get a date with Vanderbilt in Athens. Big day. George Pickens has to be happy. A couple of touchdowns today. Two 100-yard rushers in the backfield for the Bulldogs as well as they just handle their business here in Columbia, Missouri, and they win it 49 to 14. So for my partners, DJ Shockley, Lawrence Sisler, who braved the elements in Columbia today. <laughs> Thanks for watching as the Georgia Bulldogs put a hurt in all Missouri. Time for us to get into the studio with Peter Burns and Chris Doring. Guys, it's all yours.